Hey everybody, I'm Fun FC, Barographies here. Welcome to my workplace, Lighthouse in Wolverhampton. And of course, welcome to my latest YouTube film review. Um, I appreciate it has been a while. Um, the film that I'm going to be tackling today is Last Night in Soho. It is the new effort from British filmmaker Edgar Wright, who you will of course be familiar with with the Cornetto trilogy, uh, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, The World's End. Um, bringing it more bang up to date with uh, Baby Driver, the syncopation, the rhythmic quality of that film through its immaculate soundtrack um, was such a draw and thrill to watch. Um, although, of course, in recent times it has been somewhat tarnished by um, the actions of certain actors that are in that film now. Um, but hopefully it doesn't take too much away from what Edgar Wright achieved with that film. Um, with this one, it's a a, an ode to giallo horror of the 60s and 70s. Think Adio Argento with Suspiria uh, in terms of its aesthetic uh, and female repression. But hopefully, at least you would think, the modern twist and a little bit more progression um, of that narrative in terms of how women are represented uh, in such confines. Um, so the film focuses predominantly around Thomasin McKenzie, who plays Eloise. She is an aspiring fashion student, um, about to be moved from small town into the big city, the hustle and bustle of London um, in the modern day. She's a bit of an outcast. She's still wrestling with a lot of trauma in, in losing her mom. Um, her fellow students aren't the easiest to get along with. They are quite catty in their nature. Um, and her influences, fashion-wise, are very much vintage. It's very much a throwback to a bygone era, um, which, of course, sets up the, the time-hopping thrills that Edgar Wright looks to achieve with this film. We are taken back into the swinging 60s. Um, Eloise keeps seeing visions of that time period, particularly Andy Tyler Joy's Sandy. See if we haven't got enough sand with uh, Denis Villeneuve's Doom right now. But she is the archetypal blonde bombshell, um, an aspiring singer herself in that time period, who falls into the hands of Jack, played by Matt Smith, proper Jack, literally the lad um, type of character who very much sort of tries to take advantage of women uh, for his own personal gain. Um, and with Anya Tally joys dream of being a singer, um, evoking the likes of Scylla Black, and Petula Clark, um, which I will get to in a moment with a particular song. Um, he very much takes advantage of that. But of course, reality blurs. Um, and for Thomas and Mackenzie's character in the modern day, she ends up in this house where there's a lot of history behind it, shall we say. Um, that's all I'm going to say in terms of the narrative. Now, we'll start with the positives. The production and the costume design are superb. The attention to detail, the high fashion of that period is wonderfully evoked um, through Edgar Wright, um, which, you know, his, his style of direction is very kinetic. There's always a great verb and attack to it. And, you know, in a, ho in a horror genre, it tends to be a bit more um, atmospheric and um, more of a slow burner kind of vibe to it. Um, but in terms of its gallery influences, um, with, you know, hints of procedural about it and mystery, um, thrown with the classic rings of a slasher film, in two thirds of the film, it blends very, very well. But when it starts to escalate, and this is where I've got to sort of go around it, um, plot wise, because I don't want to give too much away. The third act starts to fall apart for me. Um, I think, as I mentioned before, with the giallo horror uh, subgenre and the female repression, I was sort of hoping that it had a little bit more interesting to say. Um, and I think anything that sort of hinted through scripts, it sort of gets buried with all the overpowering of the visual. Um, fun, if you like, that Edgar Wright's trying to have with it, and you know, with the deep reds and the, um, you know, the crisp blues, and you know, trying to revert, especially in, in the confines of a bedroom, um, you're immediately jumping to Suspiria with the Gento. Um, but I think the way he 
frames women um, as victims in in how it escalates, I found it really reductive. And and I get why people might be a bit more forgiving of it because what he's paying tribute here to here is of a different era. But I think in the current climate, it is going to jar a little bit for people. Casual audiences might be a little bit more forgiving of it, but I think if you dig a little deeper into it, um, into its subtext, I think it really does start to falter, um, which is a damn shame um, because there is so much, you know, great about it. The, uh, Thomas e. McKenzie, um, I've been a huge fan ever since watching Leave No Trace. Uh, at the time I've seen that um, and losing family members and that whole perception and sense of place about it uh, in trying to find where home is, it really struck a chord with me. And, and that was very much down to a performance in that. But she does very, you know, the screen queen very well. But the problem I have with it is just how the character is framed um, within its overall narrative. And I think it really just just doesn't work for me, in all honesty. Um, and I think it's just very surface level in what it's trying to um, explore. And Anya Taylor-Joy, um, she does, you know, the singing blonde bombshell very well of that 60s period. Um, and she does a superb rendition of Petula Clark's Downtown. Um, it's certainly one of the showstoppers of the film. Um, and, you know, I've been listening to it quite a lot in recent times, inevitably. You know, you've my gay card now if you don't like that song, frankly. Um, and Matt Smith, um, you know, a former Doctor Who, of course. I think he brings a lot of menace to it. Um, but again, rather like his fellow co-stars, it all feels very surface level. Um, the meteor roles... Um, pretty much down to the older siblings of the cast. Um, Terence Stamp makes a terrific cameo, uh, sort of peppers the film with his very enigmatic um, man about town and sort of surveys the scene a lot. And Thomas McKenzie is certainly unnerved by a lot of why he's sort of you know, popping up in very uh, peculiar places. But arguably... Um, I have to leave the last note to Diana Rigg, the late Diana Rigg, who um, passed away recently. She um, she very much holds it all together, just about um, as the, um, the the one who lets uh, Thomas e. McKenzie into this mysterious house um, that ha is steeped in some very uh, horrific uh, history uh, that she slowly unravels as the film goes along um but as i say i think the third act is where the issues lie casual audiences will be more forgiving i personally think it was very reductive and i think in a current climate where you know there's a greater argument and maybe people will probably you know throw it at me that i'm really overthinking this in terms of what is essentially many people will be just like a popcorn thrill ride of a horror and a slasher but I think the way that women are framed within it um, in the current climate is a little bit problematic, shall we say, um, in this whole argument of protecting women and how they are framed um, within their story, um, a very unfortunate story in many cases. So I just found it a little bit uncomfortable at, in, in points. Um, but other than that, I think last night in Soho, two thirds of the film, terrific, great fun to watch. But as soon as it tries to elevate and escalate, it really starts to fall apart, which is a shame. I'll wrap up there. Um, that is my review of last night in Soho. I hope I haven't rambled too much. I feel like I say this all the time, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, I appreciate it might be a little bit rusty. Um, there are other reviews on the way. In written ones, the Movie Marker, of course, www.moviemarker.co.uk, I'll be covering Mothering Sunday, Benediction, and Great Freedom. Uh, in terms of other video reviews, I am looking to review the likes of Titan um, and Benedetta. Uh, those are the two that sort of 
at the forefront of my mind right now. Um, but that is a wrap on my review of Last Night in Tarot. Sincerely, I hope you've enjoyed it. And lovely to reconnect with you all. Uh, take care and bye-bye for now. See you later.